In the NICU or in the neonatal world, we talk a lot about the baby's belly being soft, which is a good thing. It means that you can kind of press down on it and it gives. We don't want it to be hard and distended. We want it to be soft. So the softness or the hardness is really kind of one of the first things that we notice about the baby's belly. So if it is hard and distended, so the belly's kind of curving outwards and you feel like it's full and you can't press down on it, then one of the things that we'd worry about is that there's some sort of intestinal blockage. So literally the intestine was made with either a stenosis or like the intestine just kind of comes to an abrupt stop at some point and all the air and the contents are kind of building up before then. Or there could be just some sort of mass in the belly or it could just be that one of the organs is much larger than it should be so like a massive kidney or the liver is much larger or there could be some sort of infection as well going on that's making all the belly like really hard and stopping any of the intestines from working after your first glance then you should also listen to the baby's belly with your stethoscope. So what you're listening for are bowel sounds. That's the usual rumbling of the belly that you should hear as the intestines are kind of being pushed forward. If you don't hear any bowel sounds, then something could be going on. For example, the baby could have an infection. There could be an electrolyte abnormality. For example, the magnesium level could be really high if the mother was on magnesium. Or, for example, the baby was so shocked at delivery with like really low abgars that the belly is just not ready to start tolerating feeds. If the belly is really concave and sucked in, so like it almost feels like it's empty, then this could be a sign that there's a congenital diaphragmatic hernia. So the diaphragm is the muscle, you know, between the chest and the belly. And if there's a hole in that muscle, then the intestines and the contents in the belly could all go up to the chest and make the belly empty or concave. Honestly, they talk about this a lot on exams, that you have a baby with a concave belly, what should you be worried about? In reality, these babies are so sick from respiratory distress that you're not really noticing what's going on in the belly. You're too concerned about getting this baby intubated and getting oxygen in them. Obviously, an important part of the abdominal GI exam is making sure that the anus is patent. So make sure that there is like a hole where the anus should be. Sometimes this can trick you. So what you're looking for is kind of some puckering around the anus and it really should look like there's a hole that goes all the way through it. We don't really check temperatures with rectal thermometers any longer. So really you have to kind of open it up sometimes to take a good look. Don't be too aggressive. You can actually cause a tear that way. And just to repeat again, remember that all babies should pass a stool within the first 24 hours of life or a meconium. They just have to pass one and that's basically if they're term. Make sure that you're also examining the belly button really well. Remember that in a normal umbilical cord, there are three vessels. A, V, A. So two arteries and a vein. Remember this with AVA, A, V, A. Some babies are born with two vessels, which is always one artery and one vein. These babies are at slightly increased risk of being on the smaller side, as well as having any other abnormalities like cardiac or renal abnormalities. So make sure that you count the vessels in the umbilical cord to make sure that you're not missing anything. As you all know, the umbilical cord is that kind of yellowish jelly-like material. Get used to the thickness and the general appearance of a normal umbilical cord so that when they look different, you kind of can realize that there's something different about them. Maybe they're really, really skinny or just really fat, or they could be like stained either by an infection or more commonly by meconium. So they become kind of really brownish in appearance. Cords should generally be clamped just after delivery for about the first 24 hours of life. And generally we use, we remove that clamp when there's no chance that the cords are going to bleed any longer. The care of the cord now just basically involves in keeping that cord dry. We used to put various substances and dyes on the cord, but now we've realized that really the best thing to do is just not to get it wet and eventually the cord will heal and dry by itself. Make sure that you examine the area around the cord really well. Make sure that there's no redness or discharge from the cord. It doesn't feel hot. So you are pretty sure that there isn't an infection developing. 
An infection around the cord or of the cord is called an omphalitis, and it can start off looking really benign, just a little bit of redness, but they can be really dangerous. And if this is what the baby has, then they need aggressive IV antibiotics. And while you're examining the umbilicus, check for an umbilical hernia. That's where the muscle doesn't completely close around where the umbilicus is, and you can kind of feel a give right around the umbilicus. Sometimes these can, be, these can be larger, like three to four centimeters. Sometimes they're just the fingertip. If you notice it, make sure that you document it. A lot of these end up closing naturally by themselves. If they don't close by themselves, then parents have to take these babies to surgeons to get them closed by the time they're four. Okay, and that's the abdominal exam. Remember to like this video and now go watch the next video on the genital exam.